the presence of or absence of a RAS mutation can help in terms of uh, uh, deciding on a treatment path for the patient. So uh, let's start with the simplest uh, way to look at this. If you have a RAS mutation, you're not going to get, you are not going to get uh, an EGFR inhibitor. So your only option is chemotherapy plus bevacizumab in the first line. Now in the, in the absence of, of a RAS mutation, which is what we call RAS wild type, that's half of the patients, then you have more options. You have the options of chemotherapy plus uh, bevacizumab or chemotherapy plus an EGFR inhibitor. The question is, uh, is there any evidence that supports the use of an EGFR inhibitor versus a VEGF inhibitor in the first line? Or, or let's say cetuximab, panitumumab versus bevacizumab. There are two studies that looked at this question. FIRE-3 from Europe, uh, which essentially uh, compared fulfiri cetuximab versus fulfiri bevacizumab. That study was powered for overall response rate, which is an unusual primary endpoint for a phase three study. Secondary endpoints included survival and progression-free survival. And the study was powered to detect a superiority of response rate uh, of cetuximab versus bevacizumab. The study was negative. It did not show any differences in, in response rates between the fulfiri cetuximab and fulfiri bevacizumab arms. Progression-free survival was the same. Overall survival was interestingly higher with the fulfiri cetuximab versus the fulfiri bevacizumab. But the separation of the curves happened after two years, so way after most patients stopped the one biologic or the other, which tells you that it's most likely driven by other factors and not by the primary molecules uh, that you're inhibiting. And of course, the study again was not powered for survival, so there is a limitation of how to interpret this. CLGB80405 asked a question of bevacizumab plus chemotherapy versus cetuximab plus chemotherapy. In the study, patients were allowed to have fulfiri or fulfox as the backbone. Choice of physician. This study did not show any differences between the cetuximab and the bevacizumab arms. And in fact, if you actually look at the fulfiri bevacizumab versus the fulfiri cetuximab uh, subgroup, uh, the fulfiri bevacizumab did a little bit better in terms of survival than the fulfiri cetuximab. So essentially, if you take the two studies, FIRE3 and CLGB80405, and put all this together, what these studies will inform you is that there's really no preference of one versus the other. So this is how it gets complicated. So how do you choose which biologic you start with? There are a lot of considerations that would let you, that would lead you to choose one versus the other. Uh, there's the toxicity considerations. Bevacizumab tends to have silent toxicities. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't exacerbate the toxicities from the chemo. Uh, EGFR inhibitors like cetuximab and penitumumab uh, have a risk of rash in 90% of the patients. 10 to 12% of the patients, the rash is quite severe. Uh, and may require dose reductions. It's very, very uncomfortable to patients. EGFR inhibitors increase the risk of diarrhea from chemotherapy, hypomagnesemia, so they come with their toxicities. The other intriguing factor here is when, we, when they looked at the cost analysis uh, from CLGB80405, and the cost analysis was relatively rudimentary, but I think it was important to see that the patients that received, fulfiri, uh, that received chemotherapy plus cetuximab versus those that f received fulfiri bevacizumab uh, between acute care and cost of drug, it was cheaper to give, uh, to give chemotherapy plus bevacizumab than to give chemotherapy plus cetuximab. So it ends up being also cheaper. So that, that brings the question of what do you do with the patient who's RAS wild type and at this point of time, the preference, at least in the United States overall, remains that those patients would start with chemotherapy plus bevacizumab first. What the, 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 the presence, uh, the absence of a mutation, so rash wild type, uh, essentially tells you that for those patients who fail first line chemotherapy plus bevacizumab, there's a strong consideration uh, for an EGFR inhibitor in the second line. Uh, and some folks prefer just to keep them to the third line.